I agree. The silent run from yesterday, probably one of the craziest runs I've ever had, period, let alone silent runs. Truly an unholy series of events happened, and we got a very ridiculous run out of it. Normally, I don't really like curse starts, but this one's not bad. We can get rid of the curse very, very quickly. We just have to deal with the curse for one early fight. That might hurt, but it won't hurt too bad. Otherwise, Colorless Card is okay. Max Health is okay. Boss Swap is, of course, high variance. We go this way. Get an upgrade here, maybe fight the elite. We actually don't have to, so we'll mark that as a challenge option. I think yellow, it's not gonna be as hard as a red path. And then we've got, we'll mark this in red. Got two elites that way, spooky-like. Or maybe more reasonably, we can go here. Or here. This isn't yellow, Something like that. So with the color vaguely uh, approximating the difficulty and kind of pathing through, I think, where the most valuable spots of the act are. Some in interesting other possibilities here. We get a lot of rest sites going far left, but requires beating this elite with very little prep. Very hard to do that. Likewise, going through this elite could just be disaster. If this is, for example, Lagavulin and you don't get any good attack cards on the way. Let's try this 250 gold start. We get the least bad curse of all, a clumsy. Could even be a reason to not remove the curse. However, standing before us is the deadly jaw worm. I guess it's not going to be too bad a fight since this curse won't get drawn again. We just lose both of those curses. And we didn't waste any energy turn one, so I think all things considered, that went pretty well. I'm going to sneak the bash in there for two health penalty. Surely has to be worth it. Uh, I'm going to defend twice here, though, given this draw. Either the Jawworm will not attack me, in which case we get to Bash Strike and then win next turn. Or if it did attack me, we just take the two by defending twice. Okay, I'm going to sneak a couple more hit points in there. Goo. Hmm. Is this what it takes to get me to pick a heavy blade? I'm calling it. If I take heavy blade, there's a Dubu doll in the store. It's gotta be. I believe in it. Two cost deal 14 is very, very inefficient. You need at least two points of strength for heavy blade to even match a carnage. Um, but... With some strength, it can be okay. My issues with Heavy Blade are, are twofold. The, the two cost is pretty difficult to afford, and the damage is abysmal unless you have strength already. There's going to be a barricade in the shop 100%. Oof. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this Heavy Blade a chance. At the moment, it's, it's still better than nothing. If only barely. Could remove the curse, or we can transform or upgrade a card. Interesting. Note that if we were to transform the curse, we would get another curse. Not a good idea. Transform the heavy blade, also not a bad idea. Probably going to transform a strike here. We could just outright remove uh, Clumsy, giving me more options at the shop. I could upgrade Bash. That's also not that bad. But I'm going to transform one strike. Give us a bit more direction here. Get Hemokinesis. Pretty good. It's more damage than Heavy Blade for less, one less energy. A little bit of self-damage, but a little bit of self-damage never hurt anybody, right? Ah. Heavy Blade believers, we are rewarded. With Brimstone, at the start of your turn, gain two strength and all enemies gain one strength. Now I just look like a genius. Oh. Wait a minute, who's our act boss? Uh, slime boss, right? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> it's like, are we not fighting Hexaghost, right? I do not really recommend Brimstone against Hexaghost. 
it is a bad time. So, with Brimstone, strength of all players on the board is scaling up rapidly. Brimstone is all about um, cost-efficient block. You're never going to get it anywhere playing defense, but reducing enemy strength by a portion is pretty good, and gaining 30 block from one card is also pretty good. Did we ever take a Dark Embrace? If I Dark Embrace, I can reasonably keep the uh, curses, could I? Maybe. Hmm. I don't know, it feels a little bit cheeky to rely on Dark Embrace and these curses at the moment. Could be very, very powerful, though. But when your enemies are gaining strength, having dead draws is very, very bad. Can't play Dark Embrace and Heavy Blade in one turn, or Uppercut and Heavy Blade in one turn. Uh, we'll have to get some, some energy somehow. Here's an important question. Can I afford all three? 74 plus 75 plus... Or not, ah, blah. Plus 44, no. We're seven gold short of Uppercut, Dark Embrace, card removed here. Hmm. If I don't take the Dark Embrace, it makes sense to remove the Clumsy, I think. I could do Dark Embrace, Uppercut, True Grit, though. That's a f within our price range. That's pretty good. like that. Behold their power. The Slime Boys. So, for now, Dark Embrace is pretty expensive. Two costs to get. Whenever a card is exhausted, draw one as an effect. That's going to be a very, very helpful effect overall. We like that effect. Oh, dear. Wow, Uppercut Strike just kills it, because we already have four points of strength. And that's going to be the theme in a lot of... Hmm. In a lot of battles. I think I should take the Shrug? But um, considering how far we are behind on upgrades at the moment, uh, this is definitely not a bad armament to get us started. We're definitely going to be pathing into this Yellow Elite, thanks to Brimstone. Let's grab a shrug. Definitely would like to get some... Ooh, hello. Free card removal. Since I took the Dark Embrace, my card removal is unironically going to be a defend here over the Clumsy. Clumsy can draw us a card, and we don't draw it again, whereas the defends are permanent. Although, if I get a Corruption... Hmm. Maybe remove Bash, unironically, because I have Uppercut now? I could actually get behind Bash Remove quite heavily here. It's too expensive. Yeah, let's do that. Let's remove Bash. You are a weird card. When I have Uppercut Plus. Uppercut's going to be the first upgrade. Might make Heavy Blade the second. Beautiful that uh, with Brimstone, this Heavy Blade is always going to do really good damage. Always. Here's Dark Embrace to save us on the three sentries. Oh yeah, we'll do that right now. So that would apply vulnerable. Eh. I should probably play the Heavy Blade. That feels appropriate. Uh, and I think I should do it on the middle one, so that we can kill the middle one next turn, and then hopefully prevent further damage from there. So we take a big, big hurt there, but we'll have so much card draw 
on subsequent turns that this should be mostly fine. Thanks to the Dark Embrace. 38. Dang. Kunai! Every time we play three attacks in one turn, gain a dex. Eh. If I find an anger, that'll be a lot better. <laughs> You're telling me I could have saved all of that money? Dang it. I'm definitely not going to go double Dark Embrace. That's absurd. Twin Strike's actually pretty good with the Brimstone, though, in the short term here. It's no Pummel or Sword Boomerang. It's It's fine. Yeah, I think we can do better. I'm gonna hold off here. Next upgrade might be Dark Embrace. Ooh, T-Set. When we enter a rest site, start the next combat with two energy. Deck is expensive enough that more energy on turn one could definitely help out sometimes. I don't know if it's going to be broadly useful, but I think I'd prefer to take it over not take it um, and skip something later. You come across a dead adventurer on the floor. His pants have been stolen. Also, it, he looks to have been eviscerated and chopped by giant claws. The text of this event warns you which of the three elites of Act 1 will return in the event that... The monster appears, and in this case it would be a Lagavulin. It'll say, gouged and trampled by a horned beast for Gremlin Knob, or uh, scorched and burned by flames, something like that for uh, sentries. Lagavulin normally starts combat asleep when you face it, but obviously you cannot be ambushed by a sleeping creature, so this Lagavulin will be awake and chooses instead to debuff us on turn one. That said, since I'm gaining t two strength per turn, I'm not particularly afraid of a Legavulin. Although, we could take quite a lot of damage over the course of two turns. Still, I'm gonna mess with it. Uh-oh. Instant regret. Is it the worst turn one? But if we draw uppercut, things will still be okay. That way we can at least block a little bit here. Um, we're never killing next turn, so let's try to just block here. Hopefully this relic is going to be worth it. So with six points of strength, how much damage does Heavy Blade do? Um, plus 30. Okay, plenty of damage. I don't think I need to play the Hemo. You can always play the... Oh no, I can't, because I didn't draw it. This is still a kill, though. Okay, that was uh, definitely damaging. However, we get a bunch of money. A relic that gives us more energy. And a potion that lets us kill the next elite a little bit more easily. We are also offered another uppercut, or if we wish, a brutality for more card draw. I don't think we want another card draw power at this moment. I'm a little concerned about Red Path currently. I do want to keep fighting elites. But I want it to be easy peasy. So I'm currently considering yellow path. We might get a heal at the event too, which could be a life changer. With these potions, I think one unempowered elite should be very, very easy.
could be burning sentries. No, actually, remember the the Legavulin we just fought was from the Dead Adventure event. Our first elite this act was sentries, so this is either Legavulin or Gremlin Knob, both of which will be very easy, actually. If it's Legavulin, we just let it sleep for three turns and we gain eight strength. Um, if it's Gremlin Knob, we just punch it in the face. So I think the the Elite itself is not hard. It's the extra combat that I'm not that happy about. But actually knowing which two Elites this is, I think I will proceed into the Burning Elite at a minimum. Also, we're still in the easy pool, apparently. Oh my. Well then. Forgot about that. Oh yeah. Okay, well. Red Path seems great then. Cleave gives me a really good answer to multi-enemy fights, which we currently don't have. Would prefer a Whirlwind or a Thunderclap, but I can still take those after I take a Cleave. Definitely want lots of attacks as uh, Brimstone clad. Three strength. Uh, it, uh, it's a leg villain with two more strength. It actually has more strength than us. Terrifying. Not a bad open, but... I want to make sure we're doing happy flower stuff on the awakeness turn. Well, actually, by uppercut now, true grit defend next turn. That's not too bad. But then two turns from now, I really take a beating is the problem. True grit will also reshuffle indeed. Definitely thinking about including the attack potion in here somehow. If I was going to attack potion, I'd probably want to attack potion now, along with the uppercut. Actually, no, I'd probably want to do it next turn, right before I play the True Grit. Yes, because I'll have more strength next turn. So better to use it next turn, after uppercutting this turn. That's actually pretty good, too. I'll do it. Wakey, wakey! Only got barely more strength than this thing does. Pummel. Pummel's cool with me. Although it's actually the least damaging of the three options here. It's a card draw. And with Happy Flower, we can uppercut Heavy Blade here, except we didn't draw Heavy Blade. Well, Hemo still gets there. Easy. Now we have a Mummified Hand. Whenever we play a power card, like Dark Embrace, another card in hand is become free. Uh, Berserk is spooky. I like seeing red a bit with the Dark Embrace, but eh, I think these are quite reasonably... Skipping. Insight says, have you ever figured out why the iron stance, ironclad's stance is sort of facing backwards? The first time I ever saw us lay the spire, that was my initial response. Ironclad has his feet pointed the wrong way and his sword pointed the wrong way. But over time, it just kind of started to look normal to me. Berserk fits the high risk, high reward theme. It sure does. Maybe a little bit too high risk, you know? Hmm. I don't know if that was the right way to do that. Lose three <clears throat> or lose two. Two is less than three. Oh, there's Thunderclap. Perfect. 
One cost vulnerable. It's also an AoE card. Beautiful. Hmm. This is a sad turn. Although I can exchange the Flex Potion for another 25 damage here. That's pretty good. It's definitely the best Flex Pot we're going to get this fight. Boat thingy is very, very, very good on a brimstone run. Our goal is to make fights as short as possible. So, oh my god. So the block that we get for free on turn one is... You know, actually, with Mummy Hand? Screw it. Let's do two of these. Let's do two of them. I think I still want them upgraded, though. Do the true grit first. Just in case of Sneko or something. But we'll strongly consider upgrading the Dark Embraces shortly. This is not the turn one you want against uh, Slime Boss, but oh well. We at least benefited from the T set. Vaguely. Hello. Doesn't matter. Bonking time. Okay, I'll have to take one of the 13 hits. I could also use the explosive potion to avoid this, but I don't think that's necessary. I could also play a slime to draw one. I don't think that's necessary either. But yeah, if I wanted to block 13. But since we heal 75% of our missing health, um, using the explosive potion here only means about four health that we would have next act. Rather just keep the potion. All right, Brimstone absolutely carried us easily through a very challenging path in act one. We're showered with relics and nonsense. There's that Berserk again. Love Impervious though. That's the kind of block you want when you've got two Dark Embraces, a Mummified Hand, and a Brimstone. It's actually a reference to the fighting character Hackamen from Blaze Blue, because one of the devs mentioned they like the stance. That's cool. That's very cool. That's a spooky dripper. But I am down for Astrolabe here. Transform and upgrade three cards. Also, maybe okay with a Calling Bell, giving us three more relics immediately. Really don't know about the Coffee Dripper. That said, four energy per turn would be very good. How'd we get a Clumsy? It was actually part of our starting bonus. Was gain... Gain 250 gold and a curse. And then we've just simply chosen not to remove it because I have two copies of Dark Embrace now. And it's an ethereal card. But if Astrolabe gives me corruption, that's better than... Better than energy. I think I really want the Astrolabe here. With the Mummy Hand, I'm less and less inclined to believe that we need more energy per turn. Base, Happy Flower, and Ancient Tea Set contributing too. Transform one, two defends, and one strike. All right, it's time to smash. We got a limit break to double our strength. And another heavy blade. Why, hello there. I might remove one of these, uh, the unupgraded Hemokinesis, as our next card. Although the additional damage is nice. Let's see here. Pathing wise, I have no clue. 
I think I can kill elites, but uh, brimstone book of stabbing sure is terrifying. We have enough money that going to a shop at least makes sense. We'll probably start here. Then we can go. We can go places. Depending on how we feel. There's like the greenest path. That's pretty good. Lots of upgrades. Um. This looks more intermediate. Also this path. I wanted an early lead, I could fight this one, but that's equivalent to going this one. This way. Yeah, that's basically equivalent. So we should start out this way and hit this shop at a minimum. That's what I've learned. Looking at this map. Curses. Sneko Oil is very, very good for this deck. Drawing us five cards and randomizing the cost of everything in hand. Actually, Intimidate's really good. Zero cost. Applies one week to all enemies, which dramatically reduces their damage output since they all have additional strength. <clears throat> and draws us one or two cards, depending on the Dark Embraces. I actually rather like it in this deck. Pretty good upgrade, too, for a second turn of week to everybody. Um, normally a card I mostly ignore, but when it's got kind of uh, cantrip benefits, you could call it, then uh, it can do some good stuff. Extremely thrilled to see a disarm here. Disarm can permanently remove some strength from an opponent. Most importantly, we can use that to bring the heart down in damage a little bit, uh, which can be absolutely essential for surviving the first three turns of that fight. It is not too early to start prepping for heart. Uh, let's get rid of this Hemo as well. And you know what? I am, since it's on sale and we... You know what? Yeah. I will take another Dark Embrace. I know what you're thinking, but Baylor, isn't that too many Dark Embraces? My response is that I don't understand what you're talking about. I have to use the Snicker Oil. We'll see how this goes. Forty-four. So I can kill you. Take thirteen. Or try to Snecko Oil my way out of this. 13's not so bad. Get several chances at potions before we're gonna fight an elite, though. Alright, we'll do it. Two free Dark Embraces, that's what you wanna see. I rolled that potion all day. So with not one, not two, but three Dark Embraces, we can do some very obscene things. Like draw cards over and over and over and over and over again. Like, a lot. Truly absurd amounts of card draw. And yeah, we did get a potion. Cool. I'm deeply tempted to take Havoc and upgrade it. Very deeply tempted to take Havoc and upgrade it. 
Upgraded Havoc says, play the top card of the draw pile and exhaust it. You can do some very silly things with three copies of Dark Embrace and a Havoc. This might put me on Yellow Path. We'll see. I'm going to give it a try here. Good. Nice. I was worried they might both attack me. Oh, never mind. Easy. Just keep blocking. I believe neither is allowed to attack me next turn, so I can slaughter them both. Another copy of Disarm is more than welcome here. I think we're going to need two to properly counter the effects of the heart. Although currently we don't have the energy to be spending on these quite so willy-nilly. I guess it's also good here. Dear Lord. Please hit the uppercut. Thank you. Yes, dude. Wait, 15 plus 51. 60, not quite a kill. Could have used Hemokinesis to get a kill there. But yeah, observe, we just full blocked Snake Plant two turns in a row with Brimstone. Feels good. I might even do it again next turn. So we're actually healing currently. <laughs> hmm. Number four is offered. I think three is probably enough. But... Maybe? I mean, honestly, how could I not? Let's let's go for it. Let's go for it. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Collector bonus on Dark Embrace is uh, certainly a thing. Good luck to us. All right, our first elite is Gremlanius Ladarius. Decidedly not attacking us on turn one, and what a double Dark Embrace! Turn one, we have here. Make sure this fat girl one is dead. Easy. Just add impervious. Let me get rid of one of these. That's pretty telling. <laughs> if I exhaust the Dark Embrace, right? But maybe just it's just important that I draw more of them early. If I'm not going to upgrade any of them, then, you know, life is good. Perfect. And we just win without any further effort here, basically. Boop. Back to full health. Centennial Puzzle will give us card draw the first time we... He he he. Um, first time we take damage each combat. And I think you all know what Limit Break does. 
This one's unupgraded, which means it draws me cards when I play it. Sir Pack, thank you so much for 21 months of support. Boy, is this going exceedingly well so far. Stop making the defense free, though. It's uh, not helpful. I still be taking some damage here. Lots of card draw. Let's see what Havoc hits first. Yeah. Sure. Another heavy... Maybe we can get Collector Bonus on Heavy Blade Plus, too. Why not? And uh, with the way we've taken, we can take one more Elite this way, or one more Elite this way. If we go this way, we get also one more upgrade and a shop. Sounds good to me. Blood Vial seems not so good to me, though. It's only two health per combat and we're beyond most of its usefulness. So we'll be skipping that. Um, What the heck upgrades do we want? Let's start with one of the disarms. Might start upgrading uh, Dark Embraces shortly. Holy crap. There's a third limit break here, obviously. There's a bag of preparation here. Giving us more draw on turn one. Medical kit to let us play status cards with four copies of Dark Embrace is also definitely a thing. Pummel's really good. Dark Shackles is really good. Actually, Dark Shackles is insane. We're one gold short of Limit Break Dark Shackles. Two gold short of Medical Kit Dark Shackles. Dang it. Yeah, when you want everything, no kidding, huh? Panache is a zero cost power? That's actually kind of good too. That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. I guess I could go Dark Shackles card removal. Nothing wrong with that, necessarily. Really like the Dark Shackles, actually. The more I think about it, I'm gonna buy that. And yeah, we'll go remove. No thanks to Flex. Okay. That's my choice. Finally remove the curse? No way. This curse is better than any strike could ever hope to be. So I have all the energy. Look at this nerd. Bonk. Stay weak forever, you fool. <laughs> Dang it. Alright, well enjoy your stab. Six plus forty-four just outright kills. Can we do better than that? I think so. Oh, actually, limit break heavy blade was the obvious play. Ignore me. For I am foolish. I 
love to see a Gremlin Horn. Also really like to see an Anger Plus here. Actually, just any attack that's free is very, 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 very good. If the Whirlwind said plus, I'd probably be taking that instead. And yeah, let's actually upgrade a couple of these Dark Embraces. I think the energy savings can really, really start to chain react. Especially if you can use one cost Dark Embraces to cheapen two cost ones, down to zero. So if I kill this nerd, I do get a card drawn in energy. However, I also become vulnerable. I think it's still worth it, though. Yeah. Yeah, it totally was. Pretty nasty fight. Stinky avocado. Ha! Ah, what now, fool? Get bonked. I don't think we want a blood for blood. I'd much rather have a Pummel or an, another Anger than a Twin Strike. Upgrade this one. Alright, Champ is going to get absolutely destroyed here. Poor guy. We're going to gain so much strength and then Heavy Blade for a million. Before he even have his, has a chance to do anything at all. I'd almost feel bad, but then I remember he's the champ, and I don't feel bad anymore. Not ready for that yet, actually. So with four Dark Embraces in play, we draw, yeah, four cards whenever I exhaust something. Boom. Look at that. Limit break, gone. Other limit break, also gone. Now what? Bonk. Got bad news for you, champ. You're dead. There's our pride and joy. Reaper lets us gain health back. As long as we have a way to do lots of damage. Oh yeah, we have that. Alright, well that's amazing. It even exhausts, drawing a whole bunch of cards. Great with the mummy hand too. Easy. Easy. I'm down for a fusion hammer. This is not the best Sozu, but I'm definitely down for a fusion hammer. Just take the deck as it is, give it one more energy per turn, and we get to rest for health at the final fires, which is probably a good idea anyway. Although with Reaper, maybe not. What upgrades would be really sad about not getting? Impervious upgrade would be good. The Disarm and maybe Dark Shackles upgrade would be good. Dark Shackles upgrades to 15. Ever hit triple dim digit strength? Oh yeah, su superior. You might even see us hit uh, 999 strength on this run. If you've got a couple of limit breaks, it's surprisingly easy to do, as it only takes a, a fairly small number of doublings to get to 1,000. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube? by getting a channel membership. For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Why do we need potions? Potions can be one of our best defenses against the hearts, especially if we can get something like a artifact potion to block Vulnerable or a Fury in a Bottle to give us a second life. Those would both be really, 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 really helpful ways for us to not get slain. 
by the gigantic angry hearts. Hmm. Since we have the fusion hammer and a reaper, I don't think we're going to need to go to rest sites much. So I'm going to do my best to pick a path that hits as few rest sites as possible while also getting other good value. I'm thinking this could also opt just out of these rest sites entirely, go three more combats. But that gets us three elites in total. There's a shop here to spend some money in. And we'll be able to get lots of card rewards and healing and potion drops and such from these combats. Since we have this free strength every turn off of Brimstone, we are really, again, at an advantage in most fights. Except for... The one final fight coming up, where the 15x attacking heart is going to obliterate our faces if we don't have a good answer to uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of damage. So the goal is to help ourselves get there with something like potions. The Burning Pack Plus? That's really cool. Let's us exhaust stuff in hand, even more card draw. We would really at this point appreciate um, something like a Seeing Red or anything else that can give us more energy immediately. And draw seven. Don't mind if I do, actually. <laughs> Get rid of the disarm. Just draw a lot. Okay. Pervious counts. Armaments Plus lets us upgrade all cards in our hand. Given that we have a lot of card draw, that actually seems pretty good. Yeah. It'll get even sillier if we can find ourselves a Corruption, too. I like these potions more than a fire pot. I'll tangle with these nerds. Very, very dangerous fight, but we get a rare relic and lots of cash if we're able to win. Sounds right up my alley, actually. Beautiful. We can always get the health back from the Reaper afterwards. I think this is also a really good skill potion time. Yeah, let's go ahead and offering. Why don't we? Sounds beautiful. Get a strike free. Blade now does 51. With the strength, that's actually a kill. Good. Good. Good fight. Our reward for that is the gambling chip. Exceptionally good, letting us discard any number of cards on turn one to draw that many again. Dropkick could be okay here. I don't think we have quite have enough vulnerable constancy to make this really good. Likewise, I don't want the body slam nor the entrench. Okay, we'll skip all this. Hello.
Writhing Mass changes their attack intent when we hit them. Gotta be very careful about doing that, though. So we can dramatically increase their damage output or uh, cause them to try to curse us if we do that. Not something I'm looking to achieve here. Havoc guaranteed hits in Dark Embrace, by the way. So that hits Dark Embrace. Cool. Please draw me four. Perfect. Stop there. Get rid of this defense. Upgraded Pommel Strike's okay, but this deck definitely doesn't need more card draw. Definitely does not need that. Alright. Skip. It's only two strength. Hmm. Might be in trouble momentarily. We'll see. Less so. I like that we drew the impervious, though. Let's draw some more now. Worst case scenario, I've got the elixir. Looks like we're okay, though. Go uppercut, anger, anger, defense. Win next turn. Right? Yeah. Or Calcum provides a little bit of guaranteed block. Another dark embrace. Five is definitely too many, right? You don't need that. Juggernaut doesn't seem too helpful. Hey there, Tom. I am still planning on a variety game after this run. If you want, you could go ahead and start the poll for what that game will be between uh, Battle Brothers and Hades. Rizzo Bear, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. More strength. Uh, I'm definitely down for another copy of Dark Shackles here. Silence Deagle 50, thank you for the Prime sub as well. None of these potions are too amazing. Still keeping an eye out for any sorts of artifacts. Could buy a card removal here. There's another shop coming up very shortly. I think that means I just take the Dark Shackles. Oh, that command's out of date. Hold on. Delete that. Okay. Wait, I didn't buy the thing. I guess that's okay, too. I'll have more money for the next store. I'm very distracted by chat. Hmm. 
So I can always Reaper it back, right? Right. So, dear chat members, help me decide what I'm going to play after this run. Are we going to beat up our dad in Hades? Or do more brave men lose their lives in Battle Brothers? Copy of Havoc unupgraded. I don't think I want two of them. Seldom seen such an absolutely even poll. Clearly, we have to play Hades Brothers. So, in Hades, we're currently uh, working towards trying to unlock the true ending in, in as few runs as possible. So, we've created a save file that has. Uh, has won six out of its eight runs so far. Uh, and we're just still progressing through and unlocking kind of the early stuff in the save file while, while playing at a pretty good level. It's, it's been really fun to revisit in this regard. Shuriken, I think that's a trap. Given that we just picked up Singing Bowl, I'm really eyeing Ori here. That could be another 10 max HP for us. Bottled Lightning could bottle... Bottled Disarm could make a huge difference against Heart, but I think we have enough... Um, mitigation. I don't think it's going to matter too much. Let's see what's in here. Health. Maybe. Health. <laughs> Six Dark Embraces. Let's take one of these. Brutality is basically an energy generating card since it's a zero cost power. And it draws us some cards too. No feel no pains spotted. That's all right. Okay. Turn one. At least we've got the easier attack. Save me or a calcum. If we lose any on this turn. Definitely. Okay. Not to fear, that's what Reaper is for. War Paint will upgrade two skills at random. Pummel is a yes, please. Hitting a bunch of times and exhausting. Oh man, Shackles Plus and Impervious Plus just made our defense way better. And yeah, I'll take this Blood Potion over the Fear Pot. Good stuff. Yeah, really nice hits. Very 
risky to Havoc at the moment. Let's not do that. Chat has no idea what they want. I understand. Me either, Chat. Me either. That's what Reaper is for. Doesn't kill. I would draw if I uh, cleaved because of the thorns damage. Intriguingly. Just gotta worry about it though. Let's take the Aura Calcum. So I believe how this works is that I take the damage from the thorns and then heal. Yeah. Back up to full. Shrug says plus on it. All right. Welcome. Reaper spikes work the way you want it to. Did you want it to work like that? Because if so, yes. I'd say it does. Votes in while they're hot. Just a few minutes left to tell me what to play next. Double pummel? I would have been all over this reckless charge if, uh... I think I need it, actually. I would have been all over that reckless charge if... We had taken the medical kit. Alright, Awakened One's going to be rather interesting, partially because I have a lot of Dark Embraces that I intend to play, and partially because the Awakened One is going to gain strength for each of those. That said, it already has to be a short fight because the Awakened One already gains strength every turn from the Brimstone. Although our disarms can definitely buy us some time here. Pretty happy with three Dark Embraces on turn one. The last one in hand might trigger it that one. Yeah, uh, Burning Pacted, since that's what I have it. I'll trigger the brutality too. Two heavy blades is enough right now. Happy to take some damage to make it better next turn. I can actually reset your strength by playing the Dark Shackles as I kill you this turn. Brilliant. Enjoy your zero strength, nerd. Pathetic.
And they end with exactly a die. All right, well... I guess I'll just choose what I want to play then. Bring it right back to me. I am the tie-breaking vote. But you won't find out what it is until this runs over. Because yes, I am going to do you dirty like that. Upgrade it? Uh, yeah, sure. Massive card draw with Centennial Puzzle Brutality here. Beautiful. Just play all of the games forever. I know that's what chat wants from me. Every moment of every day. I wish I had the, the fortitude and time to make that happen for you all. But I do like me some video games. Please die. No. Suck. Bonk. That could have been an easy time to go to uh, 100 strength, actually. 2250 damage. The heart squirms and bleeds, but is ultimately still pounding. Dizan, thank you so much for 15 months of support. All right, let's have a schnooze since I can't do anything else. Thanks to that fusion hammer. Didn't buy Dark Shackles, and that means I have extra money here that could allow me to get Strange Spoon. I'm going to go ahead and say I don't want to do that, because the Strange Spoon may prevent cards from exhausting, and if the cards are prevented from exhausting, then Dark Embrace don't draw no cards, and that's pretty bad. But I do like the idea of just grabbing another Reaper here. I also do like the idea of grabbing a power potion here. I do like the idea of grabbing a secret technique to let me find Limit Break, Disarm, Dark Shackles, or Impervious at a key moment. Let's try... Can I afford both of these? 186 plus 54. No. So if I take the secret technique, I don't get the po uh, power potion, but I'm okay with that. The other good option is power potion card removal here. With the power potion, we'd be looking to get a feel no pain, maybe a barricade. Or a demon form. <laughs> Evolve would be okay, too. And the removal would be Strike. I have enough ways to exhaust things that I don't want. Like, I can get rid of the statuses with the True Grit and the Burning Pact. Okay. Do it this way. Are we duping Limit Break? We might be. Depends on the exact situation. We might also be duping um, Disarm. Or duplicating the result of the Power Potion. It's also an option. We'll take a little bit of damage on this turn, but that's good, because then Centennial Puzzle. This turn's pretty spooky, though. What do you do here?
think I start by burning pacting a defend uh burn, excuse me. Trying to draw towards Dark Shackles would absolutely save me, as would Impervious. Oh, Impervious is in the discard pile. Uh yeah, we need to find Dark Shackles, huh? Let's see what we can do. Limit break is not Dark Shackles. No Dark Embraces have shown up yet. Hmm. What do you got? Oh, there's one. Okay. Well, that does help somewhat. That means True Grit now draws a card. Let's start with that. Cool. Armaments, Limit Break, Uppercut Anger. We'll take a bunch of damage, but that's all health I can heal back with Reaper. Found him. Hmm. Ooh. Yes to offering for Shurzies here. We don't need another attack. We definitely want a uh, draw and acceleration. Mostly the energy, actually. Pantograph makes, uh, well... Makes a big green number up here at the start of the fight. Doesn't actually do anything else. And another power potion is extra amusing. I could have taken that secret technique the whole time. I think I want to keep the dupe pot. It's more reliable. And we'll, uh, we'll just hope that the power potion contains something broadly useful for us. Love that we got disarm on turn one. Very, very good. Offering first or power potion first? Yeah, it could be a corruption too. Actually, corruption would be very lucky. This will power potion now. Demon form is the winner. That doubles our strength per turn. That ain't bad at all. Make sure the fight is nice and short here. I think I prefer that over evolve. Now we could dupe the demon form, but I don't think we need to. Much rather dupe one of the defensive cards, or just dupe the limit break, um, as that's going to be even more strength than duping demon form. One, two, three, four. I'm definitely going to play both disarms. Just make sure that first multi-attack is zero damage. We'll be back for Dark Shackles later. It's a shrug here. Yeah. Thought so. Double Dark Embrace, turn one. Let's go. This will hurt me, so might as well play it. Alright, did good damage, turn one. We got two Dark Embraces down. Feeling really good here. Nice multi-attack, nerd. Why did I know that was going to be the top card? It's funny. Make sure it's still weak next turn. That'd be very helpful. Okay, there we can dupe this one. 48 strength. Let's go. Make sure we're topped up here. So it might take a ton of damage here. Yeah. So 
a shrug, because I can actually use Anger, Anger, Strike to, uh, to do all the damage I need here. So we can arm on this too. Ouch. Get this health back with the Reaper, and then we're able to tank one more significant hit here. So maybe we can find the Reaper. Oh, actually, I can't use it to heal if... Um, yeah. If I can't do any damage with it. Hmm. Okay, just have to stay alive through this turn, which looks very, very doable. Ah, there's Reaper. Heal me for 180 health, please. Thank you. Go to 232, just for good luck. Now that's a pretty spooky attack, 6 by 15, but the fight's over. GG. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.